Yeah, welcome back to The Breakfast on PLUS TV Africa. Students of Nigerian government universities have barely seen the walls of their classrooms more than one month in the last one year. And that's not because of the coronavirus pandemic. The students have been out of school due to strikes called by either academic or non-academic staff Less than three months after calling the off their nine-month-old strike, the Academic Staff Union of Universities is threatening to embark on yet another strike. The union says the federal government is refusing to pay the salaries of lecturers running between two and ten months. Professor Kolawole Adebayo of the Federal University of Agriculture, Abekuta Funab, is joining us to discuss this. Good morning. Mr. Professor Adibayo. Good. Good morning. Okay. Nice to be back from here. Yes. I, I want you to uh, tell me about the situation. Let's start with the angle of the students, really. What exactly is a student facing right now regarding, you know, their educational work and how they might be lagging behind when compared to their peers in other parts of the world? Well, um, to say that since the resumption of, uh, from the last strike, um, universities uh, across the country have, have tried to bring up their calendars. They've tried to meet, uh, continue where they discontinue. Um, a number of universities uh, are concluding the outstanding semesters that they were on before the strike. Uh, some have, have gone on uh, to um, conduct examinations. Uh, some have gone on to uh, process admissions into their university. So quite a number of activities basically continued where uh, they were discontinued uh, for the strike. Uh, to a large extent, uh, the reality of the COVID situation uh, is turning us on, on the face. So there is um, there is a new, new dynamic of uh, online classes, uh, new uh, procedures, for engaging with students, uh, restricting uh, physical contacts, and so on. So all of that has been going on um, since the resumption of this right, uh, from this right. Oh, I, um, well, I, I, I don't know if you would agree that not all universities have uh, the logistics to, of course, keep those things going mm -hmm. uh, in, the, in the interim. Uh, there are still universities who will still struggle to ensure that, you know, most students can learn online and can connect, you know, to virtual learning. Um, but I, I want you to respond to that first. And then also the demands by us who, you know, once again, not, you know, met by the federal government, they've described it as failed promises. Uh, what's, you know, your response to that? Do you know, did, did, you know, did you expect that this is how it would turn out? Or was there any belief that the federal government will go through with its commitments um, before the strike was ended or suspended? Okay. Um, yes, you are right. Um, concerning virtual classes and online classes, almost all universities uh, in Nigeria are facing uh, some challenges. Uh, least of all is uh, electricity. Electricity is a major requirement to uh, allow online classes to go on. Uh, second is connectivity. I think quite a number of administrators in our universities didn't think through uh, what it will require in terms of the volume of data and the bandwidth um, to, uh, that is required to have uh, successful online classes. Despite that, I think many people have made great sacrifices, uh, least of all our lecturers who, uh, despite the failed promises from government, have come continue to remain steadfast in ensuring that classes go on and students are engaged as appropriately. So I would then take that into, uh, did we expect that government will uh, innate on these uh, promises? Yes, we did. I think one of my very last interviews towards the end of last year on PLUS TV, I mentioned specifically that the, we, we don't really trust the federal government in this matter. Uh, they made these promises uh, We've had all these meetings and we felt that, okay, let's give them the benefit of the doubt because the public is on us, because everyone feels that ASU is being strong-headed. But look at all the items for which, the, for which we went on strike. The visitation to universities, uh, even though they said they've, con uh, they've considered the various committees to do the visitation, visitations have not happened up till now. 
they promised the revitalization fund. Those revitalization funds are not anywhere now. Uh, even the salaries that they promised that they would pay uh, two months at a time, uh, three months at another time, and that by uh, February they will have cleared the whole outstanding salary. Again, that has not happened. So with all of this, uh, we tend to look back and say, look, what are we dealing with? You can't run universities with lecturers who are not paid. You can't run universities without facilities. I'm sure you and I would agree that the state of our universities today can be better than it is. Okay. So as you actually um, spoke about this, they mentioned that about 100 lecturers across universities in the country have been owned between two and 12 months uh, salaries. Can you confirm this for me? And if, if, you're, if you fall into this category of lecturers, how many months does the federal government own you at the moment? Oh, personally, I've been owed uh, two months. But I also know some of our colleagues who are owed as um, heavily in my university as six months or eight months. And this is because um, during the strike, you know, the, the job of academics is such that at any point in time, there will be people who are serving within the universities, there will be people who are on study leave, there will be people who are on a sabbatical leave, leaves of absence, and so on. So when they were compiling the list during the strike, some of these people are not captured. And you would think that after the strike, um, capturing those few number of people who are not captured for one reason or the other shouldn't take forever. But we have colleagues who have not been paid in the last one year. Uh, I can confirm that. Okay. okay. You know, one of the major issues between ASO and the federal government regarding salaries is the mode of payment. You know, ASO has uh, uh, developed its own UTAS. The federal government has its own IPPR, yes. What really is the bone of contention? I want you to kindly explain this for me. Okay, uh, when the strike was on, uh, there was quite a, an activated period of, okay, let, let us see UTAS. And UTAS was demonstrated at various levels. It was found uh, to be better than the EPS platform on all ramifications in terms of uh, taking care of the uniqueness of the duties of academia. Um, so that is okay. Then they said it will undergo integrity test. I think this um, this has happened. Uh, but things have slowed down quite a lot since the strike was called off. Um, up till now, uh, government is still uh, food dragging on the necessary uh, materials required to make put us the uh, platform for the payment of uh, salaries of academic staff. And you see, this is part of all the like aside attitude with which our leaders are taking issues in the country. And this is what ASU, as a unique body of Nigeria committed to the development of this country, is standing against. Okay, now let's now talk, you know, uh, some people would argue that the federal government may not have, you know, all the money that ASU is asking for. Um, so what would your response be to that? You know, and at the same time, the idea of, you know, some level of privatization of these universities as a way to make them run independently and be able to fund themselves. Do you think that is possible? And is that also, also looking, you know, in that, in that direction at all? Thank you. Uh, I, I think I love when people say the federal government does not have enough money to run education. Tell me, what does the federal government have money to run? Not our hospitals, not our primary schools, not our secondary schools, not our road. So I, I think the challenge we have is that of mismanagement of resources, not inavailability of resources. I, I, I think that if we manage the resources that we have very well, what, what do we really expect from our government? Education, health, security, roads. So what is our government doing? What really do they have resources to do? All the oil we sell, all the income from, um, from um, in, in, uh, customs and immigration, what do we do with it? So I disagree totally that we do not have money in this country to run our fears. I think it is purely mismanagement of the resources that we have that is our problem. The second thing about some level of privatization or increasing the internally generated revenue of the university, I think this is something that is possible, but you cannot um, 
give a ram to the gods and still hold the rope in your hands. If you want universities to run um, independently, then you have to relinquish totally the control over those universities. As it is, the federal government still controls all its own universities that it established by the appointment of the governing council, uh, the pro-chancellors, the chancellors of all of these universities. The final decisions on how these universities are run still reside with the federal government. You cannot have that on the one hand, and then on the other hand say, oh, go and generate your own funds. As it is, no university can charge as they want as um, school fees. And as you would also agree with me that even private universities are not find it, finding it easy running their affairs in this country because the, 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 the um, requirement they spend their resources on uh, for which they have no business is too much. If you have to run your own electricity, run your own water, run your own roads, uh, run your own health facilities, it is the big burden on running a private business, talk less of a uh, government-owned business in this case. So for me, um, I, I think there's a need for total restructuring, which again, the goal is to the part of the government of the land. All right, and, and you know, your uh, response to those who say, um, oh, ASU once again with another uh, threat of a strike, you know, these... ASU lecturers are just self-centered and they're only just looking out for their own personal interests and not the interest of the students. Uh, they've completely ignored, you know, the fact that students have been at home for so long simply because of their own personal interest. Um, do you, uh, you know, agree with any of those perspectives and how would you respond to that? Is ASU fighting for itself? I, I, I think we have to get things in clear perspective. When ASU is fighting for facilities in the university, those are not the same facilities that ASU uh, needed for itself. It's the facilities that we will use to train the students. We've been talking about how big graduates, graduates who graduate without having the requisite knowledge. How do we address that if no one is fighting for the materials required to teach the students? So for me, Calling us self-centered is not understanding the perspective from which we are talking. If we want to be self-centered, we will talk only about salaries. And you know, many labor unions, that's all they do. Fight only about salary and we don't care whether you give us the equipment to work or not. But that's is not that kind of union. And you also have to remember that almost every member of ASU has a choice to go and work elsewhere in the world. And you remember brain drain. It's still happening. And many members of us who chose to remain in this country because of the love for this country and because of the love for the next generation of Nigerians. We cannot have a superlative next generation of Nigerians if the facilities to train them are not in place. Who is fighting for it? Have you ever had the parents fight about the facilities available in the country? for teaching at any level of education. NLC doesn't fight for those. Nobody else is fighting for it, not even our elected leaders. So I think ASU is providing a selfless service to this nation, and posterity will judge. I do agree with you and I see it from your perspective about how ASU is fighting for the students, you know. You have lots of students who went through universities to study practical courses and they actually never saw those equipments that they should use to practice. But on the other hand, there are people, thousands of Nigerian students, who go to study a four-year course and they finish in seven years. How really is this affecting students in the country? For me, I, I think this is a time that the body of students, NANS and all the other student bodies, need to join hands with us. We speak with the common voice and say, enough is enough. Give us what we need to be properly trained. For God's sake, what is the need for passing out of a university in record time without the necessary um, knowledge acquired, without the necessary skill acquired? So it's a major problem we have in our hand. And I think as we are today, 
ASU enough should ASU alone should not be left to fight this battle. It is time that students in this country need to rise and demand for what they are due for in terms of the facilities required to train them. It is not enough to say, okay, we want to pass out in four years. We want to pass out in four years with the requisite knowledge and skills. Okay, and to also clarify, they talk about you know, a, a likely strike again. Does it mean that from you know, 2020 when the strike was suspended, the government had promised 40 billion naira earned allowances and another 30 billion naira revitalization fund. Does it mean that none of this has come in at all or you know, it only came in partially? No, I, I, it's just coming in partially. You know, the agreement itself is, is a collection of items. Uh, there is the revitalization fund, there is the hand academic allowances, then there is old salaries, and so on. So what they've done is to do some and not do others. For instance, they released the uh, EAE, the hand academic allowances. They didn't follow the schedule for payment of salaries, and quite a number of people are left out of the salaries that were paid. Uh, the uh, revitalization fund, I'm not aware that that has been released at all, they also agreed to do a visitation to all these universities. The purpose of visitation is that it allows the federal government to be on ground to see what is needed to make universities what they ought to be. Visitations are to happen every five years, at freely, but it has not been happening. Actually, it shouldn't require any union fighting before it happens. This is the opportunity for the federal government to go around and say, look, this university is supposed to have 100 tractors. It has only 20. Therefore, there is a shortfall. We should budget for this. And over the next five years, we should meet up that. If you don't do visitation, then you don't actually know in reality how bad or how good the universities are. This has not happened. Even though they told us that the committees have been, uh, have been formed, but they've not been dispatched over the last three months to go into the universities as uh, they are expected to. So these are all the things. And I think the warning that we are getting now is to also sensitize the public. That look, we don't want to go on this strike. All we want is for the government to fulfill its own part of the agreement. Do you think ASU is still on the good side of the Nigerian people? Do you, there's, you know, talk, you know, and one of the things that I mentioned earlier was that narrative that ASU is being self-centered and selfish. Do you think that ASU has done enough to, you know, let the Nigerian people and the Nigerian students and parents understand the reason behind their strike? Um, because at some point, you know, they will get tired. Well, I, I, I think that we didn't need the resources available. ASU have been trying to make the public understand their position. You have to also re uh, realize that since the strike, has, the strike has come in, the check of dues that is used to run the, uh, the union has not been paid to the union. So that has really starved the union of the nearest resources to run its own affairs. And that's also part of the issues that my hair has to go on. I also think that the uh, Nigerian airlines need to ask its conscience to say, are we doing right by our country? And we have no other country. If we mess this one up, we are going to be second-class citizens anywhere we go. Therefore, the onus is on all of us to put sentiments apart and demand a properly run country. And I think this is what we are doing. Uh, the, the program you are having this morning that is part of that public enlightenment program. We should have more of this. Public need to know that the situations in the university can be better, even with the resources that we have at the moment. We only need to demand for it from our leaders. All right. Thank you very much, Professor Kola Wale Adebayo, a lecturer at uh, the Federal University of Agriculture at Beokuta. Thank you. All right. All right. Looking you know, to see how Nigerians react to this one. They have, they're um, reacting already. Strike. Nobody's yeah. happy. So a comment I saw on Twitter said um, they wonder why ASU seems to turn on education on and off like, like a light, light switch. You know, lots of people are not happy about and so, this. And so it's important that um, ASU as a body um, has better um, um, communication and, you know, relationship with 
the Nigerian people and the Nigerian parents and students because you know, like he said, you know, what really is the government funding properly? Is it education? Is it health care? Is it you know, security. security? Is it infrastructure? Um, at what you know, point, you know, where is all the money really, really going into that? You can say, okay, this particular system is working in the country. Um, we can't really hold on to anything and, and, and say this is where it's going into. And so um, there is going to be people who are frustrated. You ask a question about a four-year course ending in seven years before. There are parents who are frustrated. There are students who are frustrated. Um, what needs to change? Is it the university system and the structure with which they are run? Should they be able to develop ways that they can now start to fund themselves at to a particular level while the government does, you know, basically just, you know, puts checks and balances here and there? Um, should the government continue to be asked about how much money really they are dedicating to education every year. And why year. will the government make promises and, and fail? Uh, well, why do they the do Nigerian that? Government why do they seem to do that all the time? Well, we should be able to trust the government when they say, you know, call off the strike. We're going to, you know, address everything you've put on the table. And they do that in good faith. But two months down the line, you find out that salaries are still being owed. And these are people who have families. These are lecturers. They have no other source of income. What they do is to offer their service, you know, the knowledge that they have to pass it on to the next generation. And then there have been old salaries. How do they survive? These are all critical questions we need to ask. And we do hope the government gives answers soon enough. Absolutely. And this is where we, of course, uh, wrap it up this morning on The Breakfast on PLOS TV Africa. We hope you enjoyed this uh, Tuesday morning conversation with us. And, of course, uh, with your cup of coffee also. Uh, we'll be back here again tomorrow. If you missed out on any of it. Yes, it's at Plus TV Africa on all social media platforms. Let's know what you think on all the segments we had on The Breakfast today. Don't forget to put Adoche's comments on infidelity <laughs> in marriages. Thank you for watching. I am Aneta Felix. And I am Osao Gi Ogbon. Bye-bye.